Obviously, I'm doing a call to discuss the Odell trade, which was finalized over the weekend after Odell and Jabril passed their physicals. Uh, before we begin the Q&A portion of the call, I'd like to address a few things that have been out there, as well as explain why we decided this move was right for the New York football giants. As a point of information, the only call that I initiated regarding moving Odell was to Buffalo. As you folks may or may not know, I, I have obviously, not obviously, I have a personal relationship, relationship with Brandon, uh, being the Buffalo GM from our time spent together in Carolina. I placed a call after I learned they had conversations on Antonio Brown. I good-naturedly chided Brandon about not calling us, and that's where it ended. So that's Buffalo. San Francisco. We had numerous conversations over time. Uh, myself and, and John Lynch, the GM, and, you know, frankly, we couldn't, obviously, we couldn't come to an agreement, so that died on the vine. As far as Cleveland's concerned, talks were initiated by them and John <clears throat> Dorsey. Uh, John knew we weren't going to give Odell away. Uh, so, frankly, his initial offer piqued our interest, and away we went. Uh, from the initial call Tuesday morning till we finalized, it was probably about 10 hours and there was considerable back and forth. So the obvious question is why. That's, that's the question that everybody has. And after much discussion, we just believe this was in the best interest of the New York football giants. I want everybody to know this was purely a football business decision. There's no intrigue. There's no he said, she said, none of that stuff. So let's not waste time with, a, with those types of questions after the fact. Odell is a tremendous talent, making him a valuable asset. With football being the ultimate team game, and you know you and you guys know I've said that a number of times, with football being the ultimate team game, we turn that fact into three assets at the very least. Some have questioned why we signed Odell and then traded him. As I said publicly twice, we didn't sign him to trade him. But obviously things changed. And frankly, what changed is another team made an offer we couldn't refuse. And as it turned out, the fact that he was signed for, four, for five more years made him very attractive and enabled us to get legitimate value. You will ask me about my mantra of not quitting on talent. And yes, I believe that fully. But quitting, but quitting on talent is when you, get a, when you cut a player or get marginal value in return, and we all know this did not happen here. And speaking of value, you know, you'll ask me how we came to this. My barometer, a litmus test, was the franchise tag. So just for the sake of discussion or explanation, if we had not signed Odell back in uh, August, and the season, we had played the season out, and we had put the franchise tag on him. If another team had signed, had, had signed him and we didn't match it, we would have gotten two first-round picks. So that was, you know, my litmus test. And, oh, by the way, as a point of reference, it's only happened once in league history, and that was in 98 with uh, Carolina uh, signing uh, Sean Gilbert off the franchise tag. And again, as my litmus test, it turns out we not only got two first-round picks, but we also got a third. I completely understand why people are going to debate the merits of this deal. Because draft picks are involved, this trade really won't be able to be completely evaluated until we get further down the road. And finally, because of Odell's talent and personality, this was a decision we did not enter into lightly. There were a number of factors to take into consideration, and I can, assure you, I can assure you we thoroughly discussed them all. And let the games begin. Hey, Dave, it's uh, Ralph Acciano from SNY. Um, you mentioned that this was just a football decision are you saying that the other stuff, the, the ESPN interview, the videotape, 
the, the distractions that you talked about limit, eliminating or, or that a GM's job is to eliminate, are you saying that that wasn't a factor at all in your thinking with Odell? Well, you know, it's, it's you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of stuff that factors in. But at the end of the day, in order for us to move Odell, we had to get knocked. They had, the other team was going to have to knock it out of the pack. And, you know, I, as I said, Ralph, you know, we were not actively shopping him. Calls were coming to us. The only one I reached out was, again, Buffalo, and I was just as much giving Brandon a hard time as anything else. But, you know, for us to get, you know, uh, Jabril Peppers, who we, we think is going to be a, a, a very good safety in this league, and he's young, we've got him on the contract for three years, and you know, at, re- at very reasonable value, to get another one this year, it's number 17, I think, and and to get that kind of a value in this type of a draft, and to get a and to get a, a third round pick, completing our, you know, uh, our, our our dance card for for April, it was just too much to pass up. It was too much value for us. So. You know, you know, Ralph. You, you look at everything, but at the end of the day, this—it really was about. It's about football, and and you know, you know, you know, we've got positions to address, and you know, this was about us having the ability to address multiple positions. Hey, Dave. Dave Dan Russell. Duggan from the Athletic. Uh, you said I'm sorry, is this Dan? Yeah, it's Dan. Okay, Dan, go ahead, kid. Uh, okay. Uh, you said things came together quickly with Cleveland, and you really only made that one call to Buffalo. I guess the question is, why not shop around once you kind of decide you're open to trading and why not uh, be a little more uh, proactive to see if you get a better offer elsewhere? Well, you know, again, Dan, I, uh, you know, that's a, that's a very fair question because it, when it comes to trading, the team that makes the call – all right, is is uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is playing from behind. You understand what I'm saying? You're in much you're a, you're in a much better position of strength when teams call you. You're in a much better position. So, you know, again, obviously, if because I wasn't doing that, it obviously wasn't. I'm we're trading Odell. Right, you understand what I'm saying, Dan? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, 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 you know that's really you know why it worked out the way it worked out. It was wasn't something we had to do, and someone was going to have to knock it out of the pack. Hey, Pat Leonard, hey. How are you doing? Fine, Pat. How are you? Very well. Uh, you mentioned in your um, in your email release. You know, in response, I would assume to questions about what the plan is. That we do have a plan. This is part of it. I would just ask you if you could best articulate what the plan is and how letting Landon Collins go, trading Odell Beckham, trading Olivier Vernon, but bringing back Eli Manning factors into your plan and what that plan is. Well, really and truly, Pat. You know, very, very honestly, it's not my responsibility to tell you guys what I'm doing. <laughs> that is not my just like it's not my responsibility to respond to every rumor that comes down the pike. That's not my job, okay? It's not my responsibility. Trust me, we got a plan and it, over time, you know, you've got to be patient. You know, everybody wants answers now. We live in a instant gratification society, instant gratification world and everybody wants answers now. Over time, you'll see it. You gotta trust it, Dave. This is Jordan Ronan. I know. I know it's not your responsibility to tell us your plan, but fans do want to have a vision. They want to. They want to know where you guys are headed, and that's that's why I think Pat is asking you the question, and people want to know that. I, I I appreciate that, Jordan. Okay, you know we have we have positions to address, and our plan is to address those positions. Plain and simple. 
and we'll do it with, with whatever means you know necessary. You may do it through a draft through a draft pick. You may do it on a waiver claim. You may do it in free agent. You know, signing an unrestricted free agent. You may sign a, a street free agent. You may sign an an NQO, a, a, a you know third year player who doesn't get a qualifying offer from his team. And you may make a trade. There's a million ways to do it. So we're we're exploring and using all those options. Do you view yourself as rebuilding? Do you view yourself as rebuild? Can I follow up on that once more? Do you view yourself as rebuilding or trying? I'm to sorry. At the same time, I'm sorry, this is Jordan. I'm following up. Do you view yourself as as rebuilding, or are you are you trying to win it as you move along here? Or, I, or I'm I'm just trying to get where the we're where the building, Jordan. Or the long Jordan. Term plan Jordan. Is. Yeah. Jordan. We're building. The I, the object of this is to win as many games as possible every year. Okay? So we're building. We were 3 and 13 when I took over. We were 5 and 11 last year. And 12 of those games were by were, were, were a touchdown or less. We're building. You know, I I don't understand why that's you know, why that's that's a question. You know, uh, why you know, it's it, you know, and really and truly, you can win while you're building. You know, down in Carolina, I walked into a different situation. So the first year we go 12 and 4. Then the next year, we've got to build a little bit. And we had a crazy year, go 7, 8, and 1, but make the playoffs because the NFC South was struggling. We win, a, we win a game, a playoff game, lose a playoff game. Then the next year we have the... We have a, you know, a, 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 you know, we did everything but win the, the ultimate prize. You can win while you're building. They're not separate pieces. Dave, it's Patty. Sorry. Uh, um, question about the salary cap and the implications on the moves that you made. You mentioned at the combine that you wanted to have X number of dollars for the draft class, X number of dollars going into um, the season. You have, according to you know, spot rack and, and over the cap, over thirty-three million in dead money. When you were looking to make these trades, how much of a factor was was that in, in um, you know making your decision? You know, Patty, I, really and truly, I mean, nobody wants to have that kind of dead money, you know. But, again, it's the long-term vision that, that we have and, and, and really in, in the building and what we're going to do. And sometimes you got to, you got to, you know, you have to do those things. I mean, there was a team this year that had something like $60 million in dead money. That was the route they chose. And, uh you know, we talked about it, and, you know, Kevin Abrams, you know, does a great job of looking at us saying, hey, guys, this is, a, you know, you got to take a look at this, and this is the way it works, and, and, and you know, this is what we're looking at in dead money. This is what we're looking at in cap space. So, the, you know, these again, none of these decisions are made in the silo, none of them. Everything's interconnected. So to answer your question, Patty, we knew it, and we just decided this was the way we were going to go. Dave, Dave, it's Russ Dave, Salzberg here. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. Russ Salzberg here, yeah, Dave. Uh, okay, Russ. What do you say? What do, what do you say to those who say you seem very pleased with what you got in return? But what do you say to those who say Giants didn't get enough in return for Odell? Well, well, what I say. Well, first of all, what I say is, what's reasonable? What's the best you're going to do? Okay. So, so someone sits out there and and says, "Well, you should have gotten four first round picks, Russ. You and I know that's not going to happen." Right, right. Okay. So I use you to me. It's what I said earlier. It's the litmus test of the franchise tag value. Franchise tag value is two first round picks. We got two ones and a three. One of them already being a player. So I think that really and truly, you're not going to be able to know the value. That you're not going to be able to. Do a you know Roman Coliseum thumb up or thumb down on this trade for a little bit because we got to see how Jabril develops and we've got to see how uh, who this number one is who this number three is and we got to look we'll look at you know you guys will obviously follow Odell's career and then we'll go from there and in two or three years you can 
you know, you'll have your opinions, just like you have them now. Dave, it's Ryan from NJ.com. When when we asked you about Eli's contract at the Combine, you said you had to consider everything. Everything was on the table. Uh, how close were you in this? Did you have any discussions this last week about his bonus? Did you talk to him or his agents about it? And uh, is there a thought of ex- – it's his contract here, Dave. Is there a thought of extending him beyond 2019? No, we're going to – you know, we, we – Excuse me, I sound like a village idiot. Yes, we talked about it. I'm sorry. You know, we discussed it, and we just said, you know, we're going to keep moving. So for right now, it's uh, I think today's the day that he gets his bonus, and we just keep moving. Hey, Dave, it's Dan Duggan again. Um, on Landon Collins, man, it seems kind of obvious you weren't willing to go to that price point, and so I think the question people have is why not trade him last year on the deadline, and uh, can you even share what offers you guys have at that point? Well, first of all, the rumor that we were offered a first-round draft pick isn't even remotely close to being accurate. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Did we have teams call on on Landon? Yes. Yes. But, you know, at that, t- at that point in time, it wasn't what I thought he was worth. And, I have, you know, the, the, uh, at that point in time, we were really struggling. And it's, you know, what message are we sending by trading him? And I didn't think the value was there. And it's about value. So that's why we didn't do it. David, it's Matt Lombardo Dave, from NJ.com. I'm sorry? Dave, hi, it's Paul, it's Paul Schwartz of the New York Post. Dave, how you doing? Good, Paul. How are you? Good. Um, do you see any incongruity? Um, you, you've signed in free agency uh, 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 an old safety um, a, uh, a receiver who's, you know, 30, uh, an offensive lineman who's close to 30. Where does making the roster older in some key spots, you know, jive with your building theory? All right. Well, first of all, you know, it, it, it's about accumulating really good football players who are also, you know, really good folks, really good people. The culture is important. You, I've said it a million times. You guys know that. Paul, the bottom line is, with the way the game the way the game has evolved, sixty five percent of the time you're in, <clears throat> excuse me, you're in uh, sub. You need a guy back in the back end that can get everybody lined up, make all the adjustment calls. If you don't have that, you can't function. All right. So, you know, I've I've watched Antoine for years. Okay, he's you talk about a great six round pick, and and. He he is a he's an adult, he's a legitimate professional football player. He knows what he's doing. He can still play. He's still effective. And I I have this crazy idea that age doesn't bother me. Okay, I better because you know my age shouldn't bother me. But you know at the end of the day, Paul, it's about good football players. Antoine Buffet is still a hell of a football player. So is in Kevin Zeitler. Okay, th- those guys can flat play. You know, it doesn't. You know, plus we got twelve draft picks. We're gonna get. We're gonna be really young. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 about putting together. A, it, it's a, it's about building a team. It's not individual players in silos. It's about building a team. Hey, Dave, okay, we'll take two more. Dave. We'll take two more questions for Dave. We'll take two more. All right, sorry, Corey. It's uh, Art Stapleton for the record, Dave. How you doing? Good, Art. How are you? Okay. Uh, just in terms of Peppers, uh, you've obviously mentioned it a couple times, and I know your expectations and you believe in the player a lot. Are you concerned at all with the kind of pressure that's being put on him, not only coming back to New Jersey, but having to essentially replace Landon and come in a trade for Odell and how everyone is going to be judging him? From you know, you know, it's, yeah, you know, it, it, it's really funny. Jabril is, you know, Jabril's a hell of a kid. He's, you know, he's very bright. He's young, and it, you know, and we talked about it. And and it, at the end of the day, he's coming here to play football. You know, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna have Antoine helping him out. And Jabril's very bright. He, he did, you know, he's in terms of his of his intelligence. And I, you know, I told Antoine in time. You know, he's not, you're not going to play forever in time. You know, Jabril should be able to make the calls back there. 
should be able to teach him. So I, th- you know, that pr- he doesn't, you know, he doesn't feel that pressure. He's thrilled to be coming home. He's very close with his mom. You know, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna live up in Burton County, I think. And uh, you know, at that, uh, I don't think he feels that pressure. He's just, ex- he's just really excited about being a giant. It's his, I mean, it's his, it's a team he grew up, you know, rooting and cheering for. I mean, this kid's coming home. So I, you know, I, I don't think he, I don't think he feels that pressure, and and we're, we're certainly not going to put that pressure on him, you know. And, and there's no reason for there to be that kind of pressure on him. He's he's coming here to be a safety and play football and help the New York Giants win games. It's that simple. Well, just a, hey, just as a follow-up, up, David, I mean, a year, David, a year Jordan. Ago, hey, Jordan, can I follow up for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Just, just in terms of. Last year when you brought Saquon in, you guys said you didn't worry about putting expectations on him because you thought he could live up to it, and that was from ownership on down. You have laid out expectations for Peppers coming here. I mean, you said you wouldn't have dealt Odell in that deal without Peppers. So, in a sense, you are putting those expectations on him, no? I'm not. I'm not putting them on him. I'm just, you know, he was an important piece of the trade. I didn't trade Odell straight up for Jabril Peppers. You know, Jabril was an important piece of that trade. I've said I said it before. I'll say it again. All right, because I believe you know I believe in his ability. We watched film. We evaluated. You know, we we did him coming out. I was I was in Carolina at the time. He came in for a private visit down there, so I had personally visited and spent time with him. And uh, you know. So it's 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 he's part of the trade. He was and and an important part of the trade, and he's coming here to be a safety for the New York Football Giants. Dave, it's Matt Lombardo. Uh, Dave, Matt from NJ.com. Um, Dave, Matt Lombardo from NJ.com. I know you talked a lot about acquiring players and having um, holes that you need to fill. Just curious how you juxtapose that with bringing Eli back this year as, against the savings. Uh, the $13 million in cap space that it would create if he's not on the roster. Just t- trying to figure out how those two ideas can coexist. Well, you know, Matt, it, it, at the end of the day, you know, when you blow, when you blow the whistle, 11 guys got to go out there. Okay, I've done that study. And on offense, you've got to have a quarterback run out there. Okay? And, and again, I said, it, I said it in Indianapolis, and I'll say it again. You turn around and take a look at what happened last year. Once we got that old line fixed, a look, you know, better. We're going to continue working on that, and look at what we did the second half of the year on offense. So again, this narrative that Eli's all the paid and can't play is a crock. I'm telling you. So at the end of the day, you guys got to say Gettleman's out of his mind or he knows what he's talking about when he evaluates players. That's really what it is. That's really where it's at. And I'm okay if you disagree with me. That's fine. But what I'm telling you is if you turn around and you take a look at what he's making right now and, and look, at, look around the league and see what quarterbacks are making, all right, if you were in my shoes, you'd say, you know what, there really is not. The way he finished the season and what he's making, there really wasn't a decision to make. Okay. All right, kids, thanks a lot. Right. Have a great 